Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on troubleshooting laptops. Today we're going to talk about common symptoms of problems on laptops, and then the proper disassembly techniques that you should use. And with that, let's go ahead and begin this session. Of course, we're going to begin by talking about common symptoms of problems with laptops. The first one we're going to discuss is no display. In that case, the most likely cause is that the display has failed. Causes could also include the laptop is not turned on or a failed video card. Use an external monitor to check to see if it's just that the video card has failed. A dim display. Most likely the backlight has failed. In this case, you should replace the backlight and or the inverter if it's an LCD display. LED displays don't use an inverter, so you only need to replace the backlight in that case. An easy way to test to see if it's just the backlight has failed is to use a flashlight on the screen. If you can see an image, then the backlight has failed. Flickering display? The most likely cause is that there is a loose connection. Causes could also include the backlight and or inverter of the display itself, but that's not as common as the loose connection. Sticking keys, the most likely culprit is food. In some cases, the problem may be severe enough that you need to take the laptop completely apart and clean out the keyboard. An intermittent wireless connectivity issue? Well, the most likely cause there is interference. You could be too far from the wireless access point, or there may be a problem with the wireless card or antenna, especially if the laptop has been worked on recently. The battery on the laptop not charging, the most likely cause is that the battery has failed. But it's also wise to check to make sure that you have power coming from the outlet and out to the end of your cord, your power cord for the laptop. Sometimes you'll receive a complaint of a ghost cursor. The most likely cause there is the sensitivity settings on your laptop. They're set too high on the touchpad and or on the pointing stick. And what happens is if you inadvertently touch the touchpad or the pointing stick, the cursor hops around. Just turn down the sensitivity settings and that'll resolve this most of the time. No power? Well, your most likely cause is, is that the laptop is not plugged in. Could also be a bad wall outlet or the power cord or the DC jack on the laptop itself might have failed but usually it's the fact that it's just not plugged in. In some cases, your end user may complain that their keypad, their numeric keypad, isn't functioning correctly. The issue here is usually resolved by doing end user education on the proper way to enable their numeric keypad. No wireless connectivity? Well, the most likely cause here is that the wireless has been turned off, especially if the laptop had wireless before. But it may also be caused by misconfiguration, which is more common on a new laptop on the network. Closely related to no wireless is no Bluetooth connectivity. And here the most likely cause is that the Bluetooth has been turned off. It may also be caused by a pairing issue if it is with a new Bluetooth device. If the symptom is that you can't display to an external monitor, the most likely cause is that the function key is not set correctly. Toggle the function key used to send video signal to the external connection several times, and that will usually take care of that symptom. Now let's move on to proper disassembly technique. Now research and reading will be a key component of properly disassembling any laptop. Each manufacturer has its own process for assembly, which means they have their own process for disassembly. Research the recommended steps to see the proper way to disassemble and reassemble any given laptop. But there are some common processes that you should follow. Now, I've already talked about researching the manufacturer's recommendations. You may also find some video tutorials on the web on how to take apart a laptop. Once you've decided that it's time to disassemble it, create a plan. Actually write out the steps. It makes it easier to keep track of progress as you can check off the steps as you do them. Once you start, document and label cables, 
in screw location. Make a map. Use coded containers for the screws. Keep everything organized. It's easier to keep track of pieces if you remain organized. And remember, always use the appropriate tools for the job. Saves on having to buy new screws or cables that have been damaged by using the wrong tools. And remember, always wear your ESD strap. Now that concludes this session on troubleshooting laptops. We talked about common symptoms of problems and then the proper disassembly techniques. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I'm sure we'll do another one again soon.